This is meteorologist Mark Molnar with special breaking coverage on Hurricane Florence, a Category 4 storm that promises to potentially become a Category 5. The track here tracks it towards the west-northwest, traveling around the periphery of these high-pressure systems that continue to build westward. This has been blocking the system from finding any weakness and recurving out to sea. The system's heading into a much more weaker steering current, so once it gets to the North Carolina coast, some of the latest model guidance, such as the GFS, are a bit troubling, and I'll show you in the next graphic here. But to say the least, this storm is going to be one for the record books. If you live in the Outer Banks of North Carolina, my advice is to get out immediately, evacuate. And if you live further inland or further south or even further north, Stay tuned, and if you live in an evacuation zone, you might want to think about a plan now, because once this storm is on top of you, you're not going to want to be out there on those roadways. Once again, you should not focus on just the center of circulation of this storm. This storm's going to be, have a very large diameter. In fact, the latest GFS is indicating once it's off the North Carolina coast and does a loop, which I'll show you in the next graphic, it's going to expand in area coverage as it strengthens and goes through these eyewall replacement cycles. So, we do have the main forecast guidance here at Meteo Mark tracking the storm and making landfall in North Carolina. As I said, don't focus on the exact center, but especially to the east of the center is where a lot of the storm surge occurs and then tracking up into Virginia. So, this is a bit troubling could become a category five here in the Gulf Stream areas once it reaches these areas and could eclipse 160, 165 mile per hour winds. Some of the models actually taking this down to as low as 905 millibars. That's a low pressure, really tight gradient. And to the north of this system remains a high pressure that continues to push the storm towards the west northwest. So there you have it. Let's take a look at model envelope guidance here. You basically have this GFS model. It is the most troubling. It is the latest run here. It does a loop off of the Outer Banks of North Carolina here. And as I said, retrogrades it southwestward along the Gulf Stream here, really picking up even more energy, expanding the wind radii here. This is not really good news. This is one of the worst case scenarios and then pushes it inward here towards Wilmington. So this is not really a very good scenario here. Euro isn't much better. It's not as terrible, but it takes it more straightforward into a pushing it right in shore here into Southern South North Carolina, into maybe the Southern eye wall clipping South Carolina here. And some of the other models and the hurricane models are right in between all these. So. There you have it. It's the GFS doing this loop. That's one of the worst case scenarios here. It has more time over those warmer waters and more of those heavy rains as well. And that's another story with this system. Once it heads inland, you see the GFS? It moves it, it wants to move it up into Virginia, Maryland, and eventually southeastern and southern Pennsylvania. So for those of you within my forecast, major forecast area, in Pennsylvania, New York, and the Susquehanna region. You're going to want to stay tuned to this as well. Anybody that's inland that experiences a lot of freshwater flooding from tropical systems, this system's going to have about 15 to 25 inches of rain falling, especially across North Carolina, Virginia, and that will eventually expand northward here. So there you have it. There's the model guidance. Well, let's take a look at the rest of the tropics, shall we? This is a bit uh, disturbing down here in the Gulf of Mexico. We have Invest 95. This system could develop as it heads northwestward towards Texas. Yep, we could have another tropical storm on our hands here. And out here in the Atlantic, we got Isaac. This is going to clip the Lesser Antilles. It could hold together as a hurricane here. So you're going to want to watch it here in the Lesser Antilles. And of course, Helene is way out here going to thankfully recurve. But behind that is another wave coming off of Africa here. They just keep coming this time of year and the tropics are really coming alive. So we'll watch Invest 95 down here into the Gulf of Mexico and Isaac as it tracks into the Caribbean here. Could hold together as a hurricane by the time the Lesser Antilles come along here. So there you have it. And here are the tropical weather factors here across the Atlantic. There is all the paths very active 
high pressure systems remain in place. This high pressure here, once the GFS, once the GFS makes landfall of Florence, it starts to break this ridge down up here as we get at one of those stalled frontal boundaries. So we're going to have to watch that. That could draw Florence northward here. Take a look at the rest of the forecast area. Rainfall amounts. Big story here in North Carolina, Virginia. This is where we'll really start to pile up the rain. 15 to 25 inches likely from the Outer Banks. Inland, maybe as far west as Raleigh and then heading up to Richmond and Norfolk and all the way up towards uh, maybe the nation's capital towards the later portion of the weekend. And of course, we're looking at that pattern. Look at that. That's a really bad pattern for recurving things out to sea here. High pressure, ridge of high pressure, weak steering currents keep this system slowly moving to the north. Let's take a look at the graphic here for the Susquehanna River Valley. I want to show you this. This is not to get anybody afraid, but I want to make you aware if you live in Harrisburg, Philadelphia, Allentown, Wilkes-Barre, Scranton, even as far north as Binghamton here, come Tuesday and Wednesday of next week, the, some of the models, especially the American GFS, brings this system up to portions of our forecast area and that would dump a tremendous amount of rain. So I want you to stay tuned here. I'm putting a slight to moderate threat already for that system potentially moving up our direction for the Susquehanna River Valley, even the Hudson River Valley portions of Southern New England as well. So it could draw a lot of moisture up and it could interact with a stalled frontal boundary across the region. Let's get into the forecast, starting off with our Tuesday across the Northeast. We have that frontal boundary moving to the east. This is going to be the same frontal boundary that stalls to over the Mason-Dixon line. And this will be the one that rides north. Still dealing with some showers here across the Susquehanna River Valley, moving to the east. But nevertheless, we're looking for problematic areas here, uh, particularly from the Hudson Valley on east, clearing maybe portions of the western areas. And then look at this for your Wednesday. We're starting off that frontal boundary begins to wash out and stall here across southern Pennsylvania, southern New England. We start to get some showers and thunderstorms in the afternoon, maybe a 40-50% chance. Temperatures will break out into the upper 70s, lower 80s, and into your Thursday across the region. Look at this. Stalled frontal boundary continues to be the rule here. We still have high pressure to the northeast. And look at this across the area. We're still dealing with Finger Lakes on southward. Showers and thunderstorms in the afternoon into your Friday. Look at this. Not too bad across the region. Dealing with afternoon showers and thunderstorms again. We are bumping those temperatures up as that frontal boundary kind of undulates down here. And we have get the backside of high pressure in the area. And we're dealing with a lot of heat and humidity starting to build across the area. Let's take a look at the five day. It won't take us into the time frame that I'm expecting Florence to start impacting our forecast area, but let's take it through Tuesday through Saturday here. Tuesday, we're dealing with some afternoon showers and thunderstorms, heading up towards the upper 70s, mid to upper 70s into your Wednesday. We're only dealing with, you know, like I said, 30 to 40% into your Thursday and Friday, those afternoon showers and thunderstorms, mainly between the hours of 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. Uh, outside that time frame, not as a lot of instability. Into your Saturday, we clear it out, but enjoy it, because after this forecast period of the weekend, we could start to feel the effects here from Hurricane Florence. As always, don't forget to like me on Facebook, Medium Mark. Subscribe to me on YouTube, Medium Mark. Comments, Twitter, WX Northeastern, Google Plus, and Medium Mark. It's WeatherNortheastern.com and MediumMark.com. That'll do for this edition of Weather Northeastern.